What's going on everyone? This is Tom, welcome back to another video. In this one, what we're looking at is 10 killer camera tricks, hacks, tips, call them what you will. These are 10 tricks that are gonna instantly level up your camera and your video game. We've all seen these videos before, camera hacks, camera tricks. That's why I've kept this list super useful. These are the things you're gonna use on a pretty much a daily basis if you shoot video or photo. There's a few exceptions in there, some things you can shoot through to give your photos or video a unique feel. But on the whole, these are really, really useful tips that you're gonna be able to use most of the time. At number one, which is pretty much one of the most useful things on this list, is this guy. This is a variable ND filter. What it's gonna allow you to do is to uh, change the amount of light that is coming into your camera. You're gonna find that super useful if you're shooting video particularly. It's not gonna be as much on the photo side. Basically what you're gonna be able to do is restrict the amount of light coming into the camera, meaning you can knock down the f-stop and really get that gorgeous shallow depth of field that we all know and love. They're generally super cheap so you can pick them up on Amazon and you'll never have to resort to bumping up that shutter speed, making your motion all weird to make sure you get that super silky depth of field. If you shoot round and about and on the go, this is gonna be one which comes up all the time and that is a one-handed lens swap. Simply extend your finger as shown, it's really simple, just like this, and you don't have to fumble around with your camera. That really is a camera trick which you can use all the time. So we pretty much know that everyone should be shooting in 24 frames a second if what you're looking for is fairly cinematic online video. Most cameras nowadays will be able to shoot 24 or 25 frames a second at decent resolutions. There's a really nice little tip here, but what you're gonna be doing is shooting at 30 frames a second or 29.97 and downscaling that to 80% speed in post. That will mean that you get an ever so slight hint of slow motion in your footage, things will look cinematic and you'll still be able to use that magic 24 or 25 frames a second frame rate. The next one is this guy, a light prism. If you saw my previous video, you'll have seen that you can do some really funky transitions with this, but it really can level up your footage and also your photography. Just simply throw the prism in front of your lens when you're maybe shooting around some lights or that type of thing, that's when this is gonna look most effective and you're gonna get some super unique shots you just never will have been able to achieve without this. Really cheap, really effective, definitely a way of leveling up your photo and video. Now, once we're on the topic of older videos, this super simple quick tip, which I've already covered in a full video, so I'll link that down below, just immediately will turn your camera from shooting super silky 120 or 100 frames a second high frame rate footage straight down to 4K. If you run a gun like me, you're probably having to shoot 4K or 1080p and those higher frame rates, and you have to flip between the two fairly regularly. This tip will immediately fix that and you'll be able to switch back and forward nice and quickly. Now, this one's gonna be useful for anyone who really deals with a lot of files pretty regular basis obviously for filmmakers and photographers that is very apparent this is going to be mounting your hard drive temporarily on the back of your laptop this is done with either velcro strips or i'm using these command strips which are just fantastic really really sturdy and basically what you do is just you just apply them to one side of your laptop and then the other side to this hard drive here and then whenever you're on the go you can just mount your hard drive on the back of your computer and you don't have to worry about leaving it separately down next to you this is going to really come into its own in situations like maybe flying and that type of thing where you don't have enough space like you normally would at your home desk setup and because you can just remove it when and if you want to just makes it the perfect little travel hack for video makers and photographers okay so tip seven and eight here i'm actually going to give you them together so it's a little bit of a cheat but this first one is just extremely useful you've probably seen it in other videos it is not original but this is using your camera strap as an additional stabilizer as you shoot handheld this is probably one of the most go-to tips on this list. It's so useful to have that extra point of contact on your neck when you're shooting handheld. You can obviously see your monitor on the back of the uh, camera. It means that your shots are going to be noticeably less shaky as you can see here from some of this sample footage and there's no gimbal, no nothing required. Obviously you might still need some of that gear for more complicated shots if you're following somebody and walking, that type of thing. But for a vast range of handheld moves, this is going to really add some additional stability. So number eight, also using a camera strap is using it as a sling. Now you will want to bump your frame rate up to a higher frame rate to make this work. It's just not going to look good if you shoot this in uh, 4K at a normal 24 frames a second. But if you're able to shoot at 100 or 120 frames a second, you're able to rock your camera back and forward and you might get a couple of seconds of footage in there which you're able to slow down and you get a cool rocking motion. It's obviously pretty dependent on your camera and the weight of your lens. It can be a lot of trial and error required here, but you just might end up with something looking really nice. This is actually one I use quite a bit, though it might seem slightly gimmicky. What this is gonna be is using your laptop screen or a, uh, a TV screen or a computer screen as a backdrop. 
and that can be really, you can get a creative as you want with this. It works really well for up close macro photography. You can be able to blur out that background if you shoot again in that shallow depth of field. Things will just look super smooth and nobody will ever have to know that it's all fake. Okay, so our last tip is going to be just general filmmaking and photography housekeeping. This is a SD card holder, and it's probably one of the most important things in my camera bag. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've had issues with SD cards, either forgetting them, getting them getting damaged or corrupted. If you're dealing with, um, you know, a bit more of an important shoot than one here on YouTube, maybe it's commercial, etc. That is going to cause serious, serious issues. A really cheap accessory like this is going to sort that out and make sure you're always ready to go with SD cards that are protected. There we have it, guys. Those are some actionable and very useful quick tips and hopefully some of you will be able to use some of those in your day-to-day -day shooting. We've all seen those videos of people putting Vaseline and things like that over the front of their lenses. That's not what I really wanted to do with this video. I wanted to make it a list of pretty actionable tips that are actually going to make a difference to your shooting. And hey, if you found one of these tips useful, I would really appreciate it if you could drop the video a like and uh, let me know which one was useful in the comments below. I would love to see maybe examples of you guys using it in your own footage and I will catch you next time.